those of you sweet people, we do appreciate it very, very, very much. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, I, I'm going to start my uh, scripture reading for my Bible study tonight. Uh, I think in the, in the book of Mark. Yeah, I think I'll go to Mark. And uh, it's going to hop all around the place here tonight for a little bit. I hope I don't put you to sleep. Uh, Mark, Mark chapter uh, 5, I believe it is. Mark chapter 5. Beginning, please, with uh, verse 22. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him, and thronged him, a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, and suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but grew worse when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, if I may touch but the, his clothes, I shall be whole. Straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Lord bless the teaching in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Um, I have an unusual something to do. I'm, I'm still teaching about the beyond. I, I can't seem to get beyond the beyond. And, and, and it's, but, but before I start, I want to make a few comments. Uh, you got your pen out, Sister Treadway. Yeah, you got your pen out. You want to get this because you won't get this in a Bible bookstore. You won't get this in a Bible school. Okay? I, I, I want to just make a few statements to, I guess, predicate my build a platform or something for what I want to try and share with you tonight. If you don't remember anything else, remember this. We only possess what we experience personally. Now we may believe doctrines and we may believe Bible history, but we don't possess nothing if we don't experience it. We just believe it. Okay? Now I'll go a little further. And truth that is never experienced or practiced is no better than false doctrine. It's no better than error. Because if, if we have truth, but we never practice that truth, and we never experience that truth, we're no better off than people in false doctrine. experiencing divine truth. It can only analyze it and come up with ideas. That's why everything we deal with from God and in God and to God comes through faith. Amen. Not rationale. Not reasoning. Not factual thinking. Faith. Okay? You got me? Okay, now I'm not going to go any further with that little scenario. We just, just kind of go where I need to go. In fact, uh, maybe you could help me, Brother Heinold, if you'd go to... No, I'll do it myself. It's okay. Thank you. I, don't, I don't mean to hurt your feelings. I, I, I'll just do it myself. I'll just do it myself. Okay? I, I'm, I'm still talking about we must believe in the beyond. We must believe that there is a dimension, a level, or a personality that is beyond our disaster at the present time is beyond our problem that we're trying to get through at the present time. You have to believe that God who dwells in the beyond and His power that comes out of the beyond is able to fix what is here right now. And that He can change it and He can alter it. He can correct what's wrong or can fix what is broken. Okay. Now, now, last week, I, I, I 
Last week I graded myself and it was A plus. <laughs> Just on one part of the message. When, when I taught to you, Jesus said, whatever I see the Father do, that I do. Whatever I hear the Father say, that I speak. Okay? And then he said, and I do always those things which pleased my father because he had a direct connection to the beyond to see things and to hear things. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit tonight on what do you do when you don't see it and you don't hear it. I was uh, praying very sincere. Yeah, you could get me a scripture. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. And while I was praying, and as usual, I'm writing notes and thoughts that are popping into my head and my heart. Uh, and let me stop there and tell you something else. I don't know whether there's ever been anybody on this planet, now you may think you have, that has ever heard the audible voice of God. Now I've had people that say, and I've thought I've heard, but it's, it's kind of far-fetched. And many times in the scriptures, when and the Lord said, and the Lord said, you must understand something. God is, is not talking English. Right. He doesn't talk Spanish. He doesn't talk... He can do that, but that's not his lingo. He doesn't. He, his lingo is not Hebrew. It's not Syrian. It's not Muslim. His lingo is deity. Right. His language is deity. I am convinced, now you don't have to accept this, I am convinced when Paul was caught up in the third heaven and saw things that were unlawful for him to speak about, that word unlawful is a very, bad, very, very bad translation for a word. It's almost like it's illegal. No, what he was saying was, I was caught up into another dimension and the lingo and language in that place I didn't get. All right. And so I couldn't tell you what I heard because they were talking deity. Right. They were talking divine language. You know, get what I'm trying to tell you. When God gets ready to deal with us, He has to leave divine lingo and condescend to human lingo. Because we don't understand that realm. Because that has a, a language and an atmosphere all its own. And so a lot of times when the scripture gives us statements like, well, I heard the Lord and I heard the angels say it, I heard it. You must understand, that is all anthropomorphic expression. All right. That is the divinity stepping into humanity so humanity can understand what's happening. All right. Anthropomorphic. Okay? I mean, go home and look up the dictionary. It's a very simple know. word. Anthropomorphism is, is attributing to the divine human aspects that he doesn't have. All right. All right. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro. He ain't got eyes. Right. And I saw the Lord standing. He don't stand. He ain't got feet. Amen. So, well, I saw the Lord sitting. You understand that when Isaiah said, I saw the Lord sitting... He was trying to describe to the best of his lingo what he was seeing. And the only thing he could attribute to, to the majesty he was watching was seeing a king sitting on a throne. I don't want to confuse you. You look like you got a question mark for a brain here. Listen, you have to understand something. God's substance is immaterial. Yes, sir. It is invisible. Amen. It has no structure. It has no measurement. He's just spirit. He has no beginning, has no ending. Solomon said the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. So he, he has no form. He's spirit. Now, let me, let's break it down to where we are. It's other than us. And we can't fathom it. It's good. Come on. It's good. Anybody besides my wife and I have pets? 
Please just put your hands up. Are you as dumb as me? You talk to him. Yep. Talk to him. Hey, what are you saying, little man? Yes, you are. Is it? I can't understand. He's talking human stuff. Oh, wow, wow. Now, he can pick up the tone of your voice and lean up against you if a calf to be pet. But when you turn around and say, ain't you a little girl, you are a good looking little girl. Little thing on the head says, does not compute, does not compute. Because you're talking a language and a lingo that's foreign to them. Now, your gesture of petting and playing with them or talking in a tone that they can grasp that you're not mad, they no more understand your language when you say, oh, you're a good little boy, than when you're a stupid little jerk. They just pick up on the tone. Okay? So now here's deity. He talks deity. Right. He talks otherworldly language that, that the heavens talk. Right. And then we get up into heaven and we don't understand. Right, because he's got to change lingo. He's got to bring it down to communicate to us. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Oh, I, hope, I hope I didn't throw you a curve just now. Doing good. Listen. When the Lord talks to people, and He does, it's usually spirit to spirit. It's spirit to emotion. It's spirit to thought. Have you ever had a thought or a feeling and you could honestly say, man, I feel like the Lord just told me something. You, you didn't hear nothing. He, he got into your communication center because spirit communicates with spirit. And we pick it up. And we understand it, and we respond to it, or we reject it. But he's condescending to communicate to humanity. Right. And the word of the Lord came to him saying, well, it wasn't God saying, hey, I want to talk to you. No, he didn't do that. Spirit doesn't talk to humanity's hearing. Spirit talks to spirit's hearing. Right. To mind comprehension. Right. Hallelujah. I don't want to hurt your feelings. You're doing good. You'll be hard pressed to prove God's got a mouth. Yep. Spirits don't need mouths. They don't need arms, legs, eyes. They don't eat, they don't drink. They only humans need lungs to breathe with. Yep. Spirits don't need lungs. They, they don't need oxygen. It's good. It's good. Come on. I'm talking about the beyond. I don't know how many times in my life I prayed and sincerely sought the face of God, whatever that is. He ain't got a face. He's spirit. It's an anthropomorphic expression to help us understand. Right. Even when the Lord says, I'll turn my back and not my face to you, he ain't got no back. How could God have a back if he fills all time and space? Where are you going to find his back? If the heaven and the heavens cannot contain him, how are you going to get behind him? They're, they're, they're expressions. Now, I don't want to give you a, a headache, but you understand because... 
when we get ready to deal in the beyond, it's not, hi, Sue, hi, Linda. It's no, you know, it's not going to happen that way. It'll almost be what we call a holy hunch, a nudge, a feeling, a picture, uh, uh, a sense. Yep. Right. 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 Man, I just sense like, like God just told me something. He probably did, but he's not using your ear to tell you. Right. Your ear is used for reason. Yes. The rest of you is used for faith. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm so read for me, Ralph, if you I'm 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 hope I'm not confusing you. You're doing good. No, it's good. The reason I've said all that is to say this. While I was praying, and while I felt the Lord was talking to me. It was so clear to me that it stunned me because I have never used this term in my life. I've heard it a few times, but I've never used it. And it was like the Holy Ghost was talking while I was writing these examples for my Bible study. Here's what he said. It's time for my people to get proactive. Come on, man. What was that? Pro, pro what? And I wrote it slanted on my notes. Proactive. Had no idea what it meant. I had no idea. I've never used the term in my life. I had no idea. Proactive? What is proactive? I don't know what proactive is. So I had to stop praying and go get my big dictionary out. And, and I looked up proactive. Here's what it says. Taking the initiative the positive action to achieve a desired end. Proactive. And the only example that they gave in there for proactive is drug rehab. And then two little words underneath. Socially and politically. Become proactive. Socially proactive. Right. And so me, I, I own the dictionary. I can do what I want with it. And so I, I just wrote in there. What about spiritually? Now got it. All right. I need to contact those authors and find out why they left out spiritual. Right. Wow. And that's that's what God seems to be quickening to me. It's time to stop learning. All right. It's time right. to start doing. Amen. Now watch, watch. Proactive. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Therefore let, therefore, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Proactive. Amen. That we might obtain Amen. mercy. Amen. No, 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 wait a minute. Come boldly. Wait, hold it. Not active. You know I'm sick. Come on. You know I got trouble. I got my son paid my address. I'll wait for you. Hallelujah. If Bartimaeus had not become proactive, he'd have stayed blind. Let me try it again. You only possess what you experience. It doesn't matter how much Bartimaeus believes Jesus could heal him. If he doesn't become proactive, he stays blind. Wherefore, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy. That we may obtain mercy. And find grace to help. Find grace to help in the time, time of need. need. So what does he say? Okay. Now it's time. We've, we've spent enough time teaching on this and sharing this. It's time. You've got to believe that there is a wonderful place called beyond. And in the beyond, 
is the King of Glory. With all resource, all wisdom, all knowledge, all power, who's in love with us, who is able to defeat any devil, cure any disease, heal any broken heart, fix any situation. And one of the reasons why he does it is his people are not proactive. stand up. We're waiting to sense something. And, and in that Hebrews that he just read, you ain't got to sense nothing. You're supposed to have a need. If you got a need, you have a high priest that says, I'm waiting. I've got this throne. I've got this power. You ever thought about it? God doesn't need his power to help himself. He's perfect. He's almighty. He's all wise. He's all knowing. He's absolute. Can't be diminished. Can't be defeated. He don't need anything to fix himself. He don't need anything to build a fence around him so some devil don't attack him. That ain't gonna happen. So he says, well, I've got all this power. In fact, I told you last week, Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory, in the beyond. The riches that we need here are there. Now I will, I will admit to you that many times in God's grace and mercy, He overrides our lack of being proactive and just sweeps down and blesses us. He just, he just comes in sometimes and you just all of a sudden sense the love of God and a royal hug around your heart and a vibrancy and an evidence. And I wonder, I don't know, I just wonder if maybe God got tired of waiting on us to get proactive. He says, man, I got all this stuff here. I got warehouses full of stuff. I got heavens and clouds full of stuff. I got all this resource. It's immeasurable. Come on, act up! You know what we do sometimes, and I'm not trying to be unkind, but I really, I really think sometimes we wait on Carrie and the choir and Elaine and the music to become our proactive, hoping that they get something going and then somehow fall on us. Proactive. You don't get proactive, nothing happens. Now, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I'll tell you right up front, I'm, I'm a little uneasy right now. I'm nervous. I, I, I ain't never nervous preaching a teacher. I don't care whether it's six people or 10,000 people. Don't bother me at all. Amen! When the Lord says to me, uh, tonight, I want you to go proactive. I go, let's talk this over. I, I'm a preacher. I'm the Wednesday night Bible teacher. I said, yeah, and I think I'm tired of you hiding there. How much more are you going to share with your people the divine truths that I've given to them and never demonstrate? See, tonight I am. The only good thing is, he's also on the hot seat because I'm already telling everybody, I can't fix nobody. Amen. And if it doesn't happen, we got to blame God. Because he's the only one that can fix us. He's the only one that can save us. He's the only one that can deliver us. Abraham. But I have this feeling from this hearing this voice, not here, here. I have this feeling God seems to be saying to me, if you go proactive, I will too. Amen. 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 Amen.
I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm just nervous. I really am. Woo-wee! Uh, what do we do with the times that we have not heard and we have not seen? And here's the bad one. And we don't sense. I've told God so many times it's an old story. If you just show me, you just anoint me, you just give me a signal, if you just do something, then I'll jump out and blow you as a lion right now. He said, okay, I'm going to do it for you. All right, what are you going to do? I give you my word. No, I, I really need something really good. Yeah, I'm going to give you my word. I was praying the other night, I was asking the Lord, I said, now Lord, I, I, I've watched all those old videos of Paul Roberts and his healing campaigns and all that stuff, and I watched him when he said, when he started being used by the Lord, he said, the Lord gave me a sign. Every time I'd go to pray for the sick and he was going to heal them, my hand would get completely hot, red hot. And I said, I'll take a hot hand. <laughs> I'll, I'll just give me two fingers and I'll just use two fingers. Wow. Now you, you laugh at my expense, that's fine. I have no problem with that, I'm just being honest with you. Before I came tonight, I said, okay, Lord, we got to go proactive tonight. You got to give me a signal, you got to give me a sign. I said, I told that nobleman, except you see signs and wonders, you won't believe me. <laughs> yeah, but he was an unbeliever. I'm a child of God. He said, well, how come you still need a sign? Well, All right, you got it. What happened?
and to be able to perceive, to see, to picture, to crash, to, to understand. I've told the Lord, I said, Lord, if you would just show me, I'll get on a plane. I'll fly to wherever you are. I'm not afraid. I just got to know. And, and sometimes when I feel these surges, strong or whisper type, I get to question it. Because a lot of times, those whisper things are too bizarre. Yep. <laughs> well, I'm just going to spill the beans. Brooke Williams, Mike Williams' daughter, has a beautiful child, 8, 10 years old. She gave birth to another child and half the brain was missing. Half the body parts were not functioning. And she's, I think, three, three years old now. About three years old. Three. Gracia. Three or four. They had a picture of her. I, I have the tape. We're going to show it to you. And uh, she's blind. She can't communicate. She can't roll over. She can't walk. She's, she's just a piece of meat. And, uh, and that kid has had so many surgeries, they can't give it any more surgeries. And all the surgeries they gave it hadn't done anything for her. Hasn't improved anything. It, it, it was done to try and stop something else. Oh, yeah. And then the child started aspirating, started regurgitating, <laughs> and they did another emergency surgery. She's like a little bundle of scars. That's all she is. And she's a pretty little thing. Well, ever since that's been going on, I have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And just, God, I've, I've cursed all kinds of stuff and bound stuff, and I've loosed the power of God in this. And then I'm talking with my friend Mike Williams, and was on the phone crying. He says, you know, Arnold, I know God can just snap his fingers and he can create body parts. He, he can undo all the surgeries. He can make anything disappear he wanted to. And that gets to be the frustrating part of, of why. How come? What, what else do we need to do? Well, I'm saying all that to say this. After Brooke spoke at Because of the Times, I found her off the platform found her in the lobby and I said, I need to tell you something. She gave me a big hug. I'm kind of like Uncle Jeff to her. Because she was just a baby. And I was hanging around them fucking guys. And I said, Brooke, I gotta tell you something. And I, I don't know what I don't want to offend you or hurt you. But but I, I just want to tell you. The last few weeks I've been praying for little Gracia. And I've been asking God to just Give us a supernatural deliverance. This, this child has no chance of a medical deliverance. None whatsoever. It has to be a supernatural invasion of the power of God. And I said, about three or four weeks ago, I was walking around the bedroom and I was praying and worshiping the Lord. And God gave me a picture. And in that picture, little Gracia was on your bed. And I was next to Gracia. And, and I looked at little Gracia and I said, this is not pleasing to you. This, this is destroying these kids and they're hurting them. And, and, and I said, Brooke, I put my hands on little Gracia and I rebuked all that stuff and I prayed what I thought was a prayer of faith. And her eyes just cleared up and she could see. And then she could make baby noises. And then she could turn over and you picked her up off the thing and really tried to walk with her a little bit. Now I saw all this unfold in my head in two minutes. So I told the Lord, I said, Lord, if this is what I'm supposed to be doing, I just need a confirmation from you. I'll get on a plane in the morning and I'll fly up there and, uh, and I'll call them to pick me up or I'll take the cab from the airport and I'll go to their house and I'll pray and uh, and you'll fix this child and I'll go home. And then, then the whole picture disappeared. Well, I've had the same picture three or four different times and and, and I guess I'm, I'm, I'm still struggling with proactive. Amen. And I looked at Brooke and I said, Brooke, I, I, 
I, don't, I just don't do this kind of stuff, but I just, I just tell you what I feel like the Lord showed me. And I have been just waiting for that one more nudge. Like, like, you know, just a simple thing. Go now! It's just something that I, I wouldn't be confused on. And, and, and I said, I'm going to be on the plane. She says, when you get the next signal and you feel it's God, you get yourself up here and you just lay hands on my daughter and, and we'll just have a miracle. Now here's what happens. Now was that the Lord or is it that I love them so much that I am coming up with pictures and my imagination and what I really want done. And I, and I keep doing like I've told you for years. <laughs> and so then when I ask for a renewal and a rehearsal and a and a replay, an instant replay, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Yep. Hallelujah. I understand. Hallelujah. Oh yeah, there was one more thing I need to tell you. I'm just talking crazy. No, that's good. This was the last thing that I had. Bob, in that picture, here's what I had. When I, when I finished praying for that little baby, and man, Brooke and her husband were dancing all over the place, and I just smiled at him. I turned to them and I said, now hear the word of the Lord. Now you got to tell And they stopped and looked and they said, God said, you are forbidden to tell anybody who prayed for your daughter and mention my name. And if you do, your daughter will lose her healing. Oh my God. Where did that come from, Marty? It's like, most guys get their picture taken. They go on TV. They start a healing ministry. Over and over and over again, this thing keeps coming to me. If anybody mentions who it was that prayed for him, I'll take the healing of it. And I, I, you think you got a strange mind. My mind's whacked. I got all kinds of crazy stuff going on in my head all the time. So I'm just saying all that, that you would pray for me, that I wouldn't be on some hallucination, and I wouldn't be on some crazy self-aggrandizement or some kind of phobia because the Lord's already told me said nobody's going to mention who prayed in fact in my little vision thing that I had her daddy called Mike Williams from Apopka and Brooke was crying it's like I'm watching a movie I'm just watching this movie and, and, and Brooke is crying and Mike is crying and he goes what happened he said a guy came up and he flew into the city and he came over with a taxi cab and he told me the Lord told him he was going to pray for Gratian and Gratian was going to be completely turned around and healed. He came in and prayed, said the power of God came down, said Gratian is smiling, she's laughing, she can see, we're pulling her around everywhere and Brother Williams said, who? And then she said, the Lord told him that I'm not allowed to mention him lest she lose her healing. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the, I don't know what that's all about. All right. I don't know. You know. Uh, but apparently, God is saying, "I'm gonna get the glory." Ain't no. nobody else, ain't no. nobody else gonna get the glory. So I said all that tonight. Interrupt my Bible study to ask this church when you pray. Ask God to help me to know whether I'm hallucinating or whether. It's time, when it's time to go, or what? I just don't know. Because I'm upset all that because last week I said, I, what I see the Father do, I do. What I hear the Father say, I speak. But there are times when the Father seemingly talks to us and we're not quite sure. And it's like over the line into imagination or into what I desire and what I want. Has not your mind ever fooled you with big pictures? And they're so real? But now we're talking about a major 
deliverance and healing. Amen. Amen. And, and Brooke just smiled at me. She said, Uncle Jeff, you just, whenever you feel it's ready, get on up here. I'd like to have my daughter back. Amen. Amen. So, so I've been asking God about this, this proactive thing. Is that what I'm supposed to be doing, this proactive thing? Is that what we're supposed to do? Right? I felt so strong tonight that the Lord said to me, how much more are you going to teach these people before they finally act on it? So I, I, I'm being a faithful servant. I said, that's right, Lord. These, these people need to act on what I've been teaching. He said, no, I'm talking about you. I stay in the pulpit. Said like priest, like people. Like shepherd, like sheep. Said if you ain't got enough guts to get out and try it, don't expect your people to have any guts to get out and try it. I'm trying to talk about. Uh, I got us way off track here. Okay. I'm gonna have to paraphrase this because I have. Uh, I've got too much to go. I'm talking about what you see and you hear. Elijah, First Kings 17. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Arise, get thee to the brook Cherith, and there you can drink of the brook and. And I caused the ravens to feed you there. Mm -hmm. And he goes. Now, it wasn't here. It was here. Okay? Now, here's why he's much better off than me. He was so sensitive and so tuned to the beyond, there was no hesitation. Mm -hmm. I think there's some people in this audience that are struggling with the same thing that I am. Hesitation. Right there. I did it tonight. Light up my hand. I'll even try it if you make this one warm. Right, right. When old Brandon would pray for people, his whole right arm would get extremely hot. I said, I'll, I'll take a signal like that. You can give me a twitch. If, if my nose starts twitching, I'll start demon chasing. Oh, no. I don't care. Brother Arlen, you're so funny. Okay, fine. What are you waiting on the twitch? So the word of the Lord came to him. We know the story. I've told you a whole series on it. And then the brook dried up. Amen. And the raven stopped coming. Mm -hmm. Watch. And the word of the Lord came to him again, saying, Now I want you to go to the place called Cherith, which was the smelting place. He said, I've commanded a widow to feed thee and sustain thee there. Mm -hmm. He leaves here and goes there. He meets the widow. She's gathering sticks. He says, fetch me a little water. He said, fine. Then you know the story. Uh, give me a little morsel of bread to eat. I only have enough for my child and I, and we're going to eat this last supper, and we're going to kick the bucket and die. He said, now watch, then he turns around and said, well, make me first a little cake. The audacity of a preacher. Make me first a cake. Then on the heels of that, you read it, he says, for thus saith the Lord. Now the son's speaker's changed. He said, the barrel of meal shall not wax Go away, neither shall the oil fail until the Lord thy God sendeth rain. And they went and they had the oil and they had the meal and they ate all that time during the famine. Okay? But now remember, he's heard something. Amen. Yep. Now, now, come on. I guess you better, you're going to have to go to that scripture anyway. I know. 
Uh, 1 Samuel 17. I got it. I got it. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to drive you crazy. I'm sorry. Okay, so they turn around and they have it. Good. Now, Verse 17, it came to pass that after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress, fell sick. His sickness was so sore there was no breath in it and it left him. He died. Next verse he said, have you come to my house to, to slay my son by recalling my sins? Bad, bad attitude towards God. He don't do stuff like that. And he turned around and, 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 and watch what Elijah says to her. Give me thy son. Get See, God would fix our problems, but we won't give them to him. He said, give me what's died on you. And the Bible said that he, he took the dead child into his bosom, took it upstairs, laid it on his bed. Okay, now here's what, here's what I wanted to get to. And he cried. He said, have you brought this evil upon this woman with whom I've come to sojourn? You've blessed us. Watch. On the heels of your last miracle, here comes trouble. Yep. yep. Amen. Right. Right. Now here's what I'm trying to get to for tonight. And he hadn't heard anything. And he hadn't seen anything. <coughs> the great Elijah, who had heard Go to Zarephath, go to Cherith, water, ravens, fire. But now, God puts him into a situation that he's going to have to deal with, and he hasn't heard anything. All right. That's good. And he hasn't seen anything. I'm trying to help somebody right now. Don't think you're a second-rate child of God because you don't always hear things and you don't always see things. Sometimes he's just going to make us act on blind faith. The child dies. He takes the child up in his room. He stretches himself on the child three times. Now watch. And here's what I'm trying to get to. And when he hadn't seen, and he hadn't heard, he said, I know where to go. I'm going beyond. I'm going to go past when I haven't heard. And I'm going to go past when I don't see. Why? Because the God that helped me before that lives in the beyond is too good to turn a deaf ear to me when I've got trouble just because I may not have picked up the signal. I wish you'd be honest with me right now. Lots of us do not try things because we don't see things, we don't hear things, we don't feel things. He didn't see nothing. He didn't hear nothing. It's all, I don't mean to be unkind or disrespectful to the Lord. I'm just using an expression, Lord. It's as if he got sucker punched. Boom. He just finished a miracle. Right. Just had a phenomenal miracle. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, the child dies. Mm. And then to help it off, the mother blames him. Right. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. wow. So he's stuck with a dead kid uh -huh. and a mother that's irate. Uh -huh. Now, watch. No Jeff Arnold tapes to help him. <laughs> <laughs> no Carrie Geiger. Wonderful choir, music program to help him. He's got no DVDs, no CDs. He ain't got nobody to encourage him but himself. Wait a minute. And the fact that he knows the one who lives beyond. And the God who helped him from beyond with food to eat and oil and water to drink. He hasn't changed since I've been blessed the last time. He hasn't lost his power. His attitude has not changed towards me. He still wants to help me. He still wants to bless me. But I'm wondering right now if I will get proactive. He got proactive. Give me the child. He goes upstairs. The Bible said, he cried unto the Lord. And here's what I love said, I pray thee, let the child's soul come back. Here it is. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, who had not heard from God, 
and had not seen anything and had not felt anything. There are times you're going to have to pray when those things are not operating. Come on, be honest. Me or thee? If, if you had a, a, a dire need, a tragedy in your family, an accident or a child dying or something, and they needed a miracle, and God came to you and said, Phil, I want you to go there and I want you to be there at 735 and put your hand on the right side of that child's head and I'm going to heal him. Man, there'd be no doubt about it. I'm on my way. But, but then when that child needs you to pray for him and you haven't heard, and you haven't seen, and you haven't felt, but you're the only hope of the child. Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord, let the child's soul come into him again. Wait a minute. Let the child's soul come into him. Where is the child's soul? Beyond. Amen. He called to the beyond. Hey! Lord of the beyond! Send the kid's soul back! And the, and the Lord of the beyond said, okay! And while he's got himself stretched on that little child, the child goes, get off me, you're heavy. I mean, that is so cool. Like, exhale. Inhale. What made him pray like that? Because of the past experiences he had with the truth. Let me try it again. You only possess what you experience. Let, let, let me just say something else to you, okay, just for a second. The, 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 Lord, the Lord gave this to me while I was praying about all this other stuff. And, and it was so mind-boggling. Let me see if I can find it because I wrote it down here on this piece of paper. Oh, information needs a demonstration to experience transformation. If we're not careful, we're just happy to have information. I believe in Jesus' name, baptism. I believe in the Holy Ghost talking in tongues. I believe in one God. I believe in the Holy Living. I believe in this. I, I believe in paying tithes. I believe in going to church. Fine. What have you experienced from Him that gives you confidence? Amen. Because you only possess what you've experienced. And God wants to give us as a church family a bunch of experiences real quick. But we've got to turn around and decide, well, do we want them or not? Come on. Amen. Are, are we willing to look bad to look good? Uh, are we willing to step out? Remember, the Jordan River didn't roll back until the priest's feet touched the water. Now, Linda, me, I'm the priest, and I get ready to go in. Before my feet hits the water, dry. I want to dry. And all they had was, they didn't see anything. They didn't hear anything from God. They heard from God's man, Moses. Moses said, the Lord told me you guys step into the river and he's going to depart it. I just feel right now, oh, I don't know, I ain't stepping out of that stuff that stupid Arnold talks about. They did for Moses. And they, and they had to get their feet wet before everybody else enjoyed the dry land. And the Bible says they went in and Jordan was overflowing its banks. And I don't know how far but they walked up to their ankles or what, but they walked out in that water. <laughs> now watch. Every time it sloshed, oh. hell left. Slosh. Slosh. Yeah. What are you doing believing a stupid preacher? Slosh. Slosh. Remember the guy's an ex-murderer. Slosh. Slosh. You know, he, he can't tell you this crazy story. He was talking to a bush. Are you nuts? Slosh. Slosh. And when they stood in the river with feet and ankles wet, 
Then God started doing a miracle almost 19 miles north of them, up by the city of Adam. See, you got to understand something. When you step out in obedience, compliance, and faith, you may not have the miracle happening right there, but it's starting someplace else. scripture I want to show you. Over here in, uh, you, you can read it for me, Rev. It's over here in 2 Kings. 2 Kings. Oh, never mind. I'll do it myself. No, it's okay. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just discombobulated. He's got me messed up with this proactive stuff. It's like, now we got the story of Elisha. And, and Elisha is staying at this little apartment. And Shunammite woman has never had any children and her husband was old and so Gehazi looks around I'm, I'm assuming or presuming he don't see any toys now see when you come to my house nobody comes to my house but if you ever did come to my house my, my house is like a museum everything's got its place and everything that's in its place until Camden comes <laughs> And now it's a hard day's night at Disney World. Oh. And when they, he was over there the other day, we had wall-to-wall -wall toys. We were playing with clay dough. We had horns. We had little cars that were running into the walls. And, and I sat in that recliner and we played for a few hours. And I said, man, this looks like a terrorist attack in this place. Oh. In the world. Well, I really thought then when I saw that, I said, that's what Elisha saw. Because when he got there, Everything was nice, orderly. And you get, anytime you get into a place where it's really, really orderly, there ain't no kids there. <laughs> you, you're not going to give a child a toy and he'll say, I'll just sit here and play with you. That ain't going to happen, pal. It's like a, a, an on-the-job massacre. They're all over the place. And another thing, when you have the kids around, their interest lasts about four minutes. And after they finish that $65 toy, you know what got me? We got these beautiful electric toys with things and stuff that they play for. He takes it out of the box. You ready? He plays with the box. A cardboard box! And I'm looking at them and said, we should have given an empty box. Oh, and I remember, wait a minute, when I was a kid in New York, and the neighbors used to get a washing machine or a refrigerator, I didn't care about the football and the clothes and the roller skates. We spent days rolling up and down in that stupid cardboard box and wrecked the thing. Come out of there, man, dirty as can be. said, now that's a toy. So there's no toys around there, and Gehazi says, they got no children, and the husband's old. So Elisha prophesies, says, about this time next year, you'll embrace your child. Don't lie to me. He says, no, the Lord's going to give you a child. He's, he's pleased with your kindness to me and give me this apartment to live in. He's going to bless you with a child. Next year, she has a child. So finally, they're happy. They're all happy. And then all of a sudden, the Bible says that the child's out with his daddy and he says, my head, my head, maybe he had a heat stroke, maybe he had a blood vessel or something, I don't know. He, something happened to him and he sent him back to his mom and the baby sat on the, and died. Died. And once again, you know, it's funny how the Bible is so true about us. Once again, she attacks the preacher. It's standard operating procedure. Elijah gets damned. Elisha gets damned. Moses got damned. Jeremiah got damned by all the wonderful believing people of God. Anytime a little hell breaks loose, you got to damn the preacher. And it hasn't changed yet. It's just the way it is. It just happens. Why? Because when people are hurt, they, they don't mean to. They just lash out. They just need to. That, that, that happens. Well, she turns around and, and she 
pushed the baby up in a little pot that they built for him. Okay? And you know the story. She they run, she runs up and says, Oh, there's that yonder, that sugar white woman. And she comes up and says, Is everything well with your husband? Yeah. And she, everything well at the house? Yeah. Everything well with the kid. Watch this. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Oh. Everything, everything well with the child? It is well. Oh. What? Right. Oh my God. Child's dead. Oh my Lord. Apparently the shooter my woman had a lot more faith than us because she thought oh the child being dead was temporary. Oh. Yeah. Because she was saying, oh, the God from beyond who gave me the baby, that same God can come back here and raise my baby back up again. Have enough experiences under our belt that it ought to be easy for us to believe God for the supernatural when dumb stuff happens. So now here, here's, here's what I'm trying to get to. My Bible study. I'm, I know I'm wandering everywhere. Please forgive me. So she she says, Yeah, all is well. And then the Bible says she lunges at Elisha's feet and hug, hugs his ankles and his feet. And Gehazi comes to, to throw her away. Because he's spiritual as a dead frog anyway. And he's going to show what a hypocrite he is pretty soon when he plays around with that other guy getting that money. And, 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 and when he does, Elisha says, let the woman alone. She's tormented. She's hurting. Her spirit's broken. Now watch. For something has happened, and I don't know it because the Lord hid it from me. Uh, I'm not going any further. You've got to get this. There are times when we're asking for divine direction, illumination, pictures, words, and God in His wisdom and knowledge turns around and says, No pictures today. No recordings today. Trust me. Linda, you, I, I barely see you underneath that sombrero you're wearing there, girl. Um, you, you get it? He said, he turns around and says, and the Lord hid it from me. So what is he saying? On the heels of a, of a wonderful miracle from beyond, God puts a tragedy into that life. He's going to get blamed for it. And then God turns around and says, and I'm going to let it happen, oh great prophet of God, and I'm not going to show you that it happened. Mm -hmm. Back to Jesus. What I see the Father do, I do. What I hear the Father say, I speak. But it doesn't always happen like that. There are times when God will allow something to happen in my life and your life, and He keeps it hidden from us. Right. It just shows up one day and we feel like we've been sucker punched. What in the world is going on? Well, you showed me this and you showed me that and you told me this and you told me that. Yeah, and there's sometimes I'm not going to tell you. I want to see how you're going to deal with it. Amen. You're not careful you blame the preacher. You're not careful you get mad at the church. I was talking to a fella today that prayed for me over the phone. Didn't work at that moment. But I'm in the process of amending. And he said, well, we're going to pray God, give me a miracle or healing. I said, let's vote for the miracle. Because a miracle is instantaneous. I said, I've had a year of this blindness. I'm tired of it. Just... Let's, let's just get the miracle and we'll, we'll be finished with it, okay? Well, he had just been in a, in a crusade. He prayed for 10 blind people and all 10 of them saw. So I got the phone up. I said, all right, baby, lay it on me right now. He makes me repent. He makes me do everything so there's no sin in my life. He said, okay, now by the authority of the Word of God, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to feel. <laughs> Praise and praise and praise. And he goes, ah, how are you doing? I said, can't see nothing. <laughs> but I ended it with, at this moment. Right. And when I 
me to my phone call. I said, as soon as it clears up, I'll call you. Amen. 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 So, you know, as much as I want the miracle, the healing will work. It just takes a little longer, that's all. But I don't believe there's any prayers that are wasted. I don't believe God rejects our prayers if our motives are right. He may put them on hold. So he, he had an issue where the Lord hid it from him. Right. Now watch. He turns around and he does almost the same thing like Elijah. Except Elijah goes up on the bed and lays on. This time Elijah, you talk about weird. Preachers are oh. weird. <laughs> he lays on top of the kid, puts his lips to his lips, his eyes to his eyes, his hands to his hands. starts praying. Lord, let the child's spirit return unto him. From where? Beyond. You, 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 you know where the spirit is. Send it on back here. And he prays and he prays. Read it. He prays and he prays and he prays. Nothing. 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 The Bible says he gets up and he walks around the house. I have Bible for, for praying when I walk. You think the only position you can pray is like this? No, no. He walked. He walked through the house and he prayed. How long? Don't know. It's not recorded. He goes back again, lays on top of the kid again. You think that's weird? Bible says, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. What does that mean? Getting better. Amen. Walks around some more. Hallelujah. He's on that kid again. I don't know what he's doing. When I first read it, I said, is he doing like resuscitation? What is he doing? He's got his eyes against his eyes, his nose against his nose. He says, Lord, let the, let the Spirit come back into this child. I always thought that was so strange. And the child sneezed seven times. I wonder why not three? Why not five? Why not once? And I, I'm, I'm, I know I'm, I'm teaching apparently a great Bible study here. I'm just going to help you with something. Sister Arnold and I were out a few months ago. Was it a few months ago, Patty, when we were in the mall that time? I took her to the mall and we stopped in that uh, Rock Ruby Tuesdays, is it? Yeah, Ruby Tuesday. And and I can't hardly see. I'm walking, I'm walking in the thing, and I, I sit down at the seat and trying to look at and we've got the window looking at out the mall. And I mean my vision is so bad, I can't even see across the hall of the mall. I just keep looking, I'm going, oh babe, this is it's one of these days I just can't see. And I'm looking there. I don't know whether she prayed. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, I got a tickle in my nose. I sneezed so hard, I almost knocked my shoes off. I mean, I sneezed like three or four times. Wow. I grabbed that napkin. Wow. I said, whoa. Wow. I mean, I woke up the dead, man. It was just like, wow. I said, whoa. When I looked, I could see clear. Am I right, Patty? Patty, am I right? I can see. I turned around and said, Patty, I can see. She said, what do you mean? I said, somebody's turned the lights off. I can see everybody walking in the mall. I can see here all the black and white spots are gone. All the snow is gone. I said, wow. I said, thank you, Jesus. In about 15 minutes, somebody took the light switch and went click. Click, 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 click. Oh my God. And I was back to not being able to see again. So I finally come up. What, what happened was I should have sneezed three more times. Because <laughs> <laughs> seven is the complete number. He just said, look what happened when he did it four times. Oh my God. Click, click, click. Now I don't know what. 
if there's any spiritual significance to that, I don't know. But this thing is amazing to me that the Lord hid it from him. There'll be times when God is going to hide stuff from you and he's not going to let you see and he's not going to let you hear, but he is going to let you believe. And that is the battle about going proactive because you don't hear anything, you don't see anything, you don't feel anything, but you know. You know that God is a healer and you know that God is a deliverer and you know that God is a prayer answering God and you know that He lives in the beyond and He can bring that power into our power. I got five minutes. I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't get where I really wanted to go. You, just, you have to understand something. The Lord heard him. The Lord helped. The Lord raised the child. Why? Because he prayed by faith and desperation to bring God's power from beyond to the problem. He that cometh to God must believe that God is, and God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Now, let me go one more thing and I'm stopping. Just, now watch. Now here, here. Have I handled that all right? You got me? There's times when you don't see and you don't hear. And you don't feel. But you believe anyway. Why? Because of the past record of how many times God has been faithful and good and generous. And He hasn't changed just because we have a problem. Let me just hit this last thing here and I'll stop. You're such a wonderful audience. Now watch. Here. Now we go back to the other one. What happens when you hear? According to 1 Kings 18 and 1, And the word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Go show yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain. Wow! I'm on my way right now. I got a direct word from God. You know, when I finish talking to him, we're going to have a thunderstorm, a tsunami. It's going to be unbelievable. He goes and turns around and shows himself to Ahab. No rain. Now, wait a minute. I see the Father do, I do. When I hear the Father say, I say. Now i got different times when I have no word and I have no direction and God hides things for me. And I've got to stay faithful and I've got to release my faith anyway. But now, what do you do with this criteria? When the Lord gives you a divine word and then doesn't keep it. Right. Oh, let me finish. In the time frame you thought it should be. Good. Good. Yep. He says, go show yourself to Ahab. I'll send rain. He says, art thou him that trouble of Israel? I didn't trouble Israel. You and your stupid brethren and all those people worshiping all them idols and walking away with Jehovah. You're the ones caused the famine, you jerk. Not me. You're the one that caused the drought. Not me. Now watch. No rain. Now he, he calls fire down from heaven. Remember? You read it. He rebuilds the altar, puts the sacrifice on, 12 buckets of water, right? And turns around and he says, Now, Lord, hear me, O Lord, and let these people know that you have turned your heart back. Now, watch what he says. And that I have done all these things according to thy word. Now, you have no scripture that reveals what was that word. Apparently, it was that he was going to send fire. Right. But you don't have no scripture for that. You can't find it. But he said, I want you to understand something. I have done all these things according to thy word. Now that's where I get trapped. Because David said, Lord, keep me back from presumptuous sins. And many times when I try to pray for people or go to people, I, I beat myself up almost sometimes saying, Lord, I don't want to presume on you because I have these people, you know, the, God heal you, everything's done, God heal you. Well, yeah. It's hard for me to say that if I don't have a word from the Lord. And yet, He says, keep me from presumptuous sins. That's what's kept me off the plane going to Brook. Am I imagining things? Am I presuming things? I have to fight my way through it. I have nobody to help me. Nobody. I have to just fight my way through it. But he's turned around and done what God said. 
show your stuff to Ahab, I'll send rain. I'm closing, I'm closing. I hope I haven't bored you all this. This is, this is so powerful. Now there comes a time that the only thing between you and your miracle is a divine delay. Amen. And that delay can so damage your expectation. So show yourself to Ahab, I'll send rain. I showed myself to Ahab, there ain't no rain. Why? Here's why. I've told you this before, but you need to hear it again. Sometimes, if there is a delay, you're going to have to pray the prayer into reality. It ain't going to come just because he said it. You and I are going to have part into making that happen. Because the Bible said he went up on Mount Carmel, threw himself down on the floor, and he prayed the promise into reality. Let me try it again. Proactive faith. Elijah had to overcome the delay. Watch this. He had to overcome his own discouragement. He had to overcome possibly his own sense of failure or defeat. Why? Because he's praying and all he's dealing with is cloudless skies. And he sends that servant, go look towards the sea. Is there anything? Boy, you talk about trying to have faith when you've got some fellow believer. There's nothing. <laughs> Go again. There's nothing. Go again seven times. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's, uh, there's a cloud the size of a man's hand. Now watch. He said, there's the cloud the size of a man's hand. It's way off. It was enough for Elijah. He says, that's enough. Go tell Ahab, get in your chariot and beat the hoof, baby, so the rain doesn't slow you down. What rain? The fulfillment of the promise that God gave me. I had to pray it into reality, but it's coming right now. That hand cloud is going to become a massive rainstorm. Fumbled all over the place here today. You know how hard it is to keep praying when the only other voice with you on the mountain is one that discourages you? Go oh, look, what do you got? There's nothing. There's some people in this church love to tell you there's nothing. They feel that's their ministry. I'm here to make sure you don't get outlandish with your faith. But sometimes, you've heard me preach on this lots of times, sometimes you have to go again until your nothing becomes something. And that battle was won by him alone. He had nobody to encourage him. If you have been given a promise from God, a promise from God, and then there's a delay, and then there's nothing, and there's a time frame, and there's a delay. Do not lose your faith. The God who gave you that promise from beyond runs the beyond. And He is going to keep His word because He's the Lord God Almighty, ruler of heaven and earth. And I think we ought to give Him some praise. study and now I'm going proactive I need anybody in the house that that you're sick of something or you've got pain in your body or there's a situation that you believe that God is kind enough and more powerful enough that he can fix it for you in a moment now now let me just tell you this real quick you go to get prayed for and you come down here and you've got a pain in your leg or in your back, 
Listen carefully. And you want the pain to disappear. I'm going to mess you up if I pray for your back. You didn't ask for your back to be fixed. You asked for the pain to leave. Speak to the mountain. Talk to the fig tree. You need to address what's wrong. Boy, I wish I had some proactive people here that would help me. Look at that. Okay. Are we ready yet? Yes, Lord. Now wait a minute. Are we praying for all these people? Or are you people helping us pray? How, how many people need to get prayed for? Put your hand up. Okay, one, two. Oh my goodness. I need some people. Come on, all you dynamos of you guys visiting our church. 